Good day, YouTubers. There's been a lot of interest in the mount I made at my Mentator to be my base port. Apparently, there are not too many half cabin fiberglass boats with a towing motor because it's considered too hard to do. Well, I won't pretend it was easy, but it's certainly not impossible. I did have one mounted on my previous Haynes half cabin, but that was a very different situation. These modern boats with electric winches, bow spits, bow rollers, bow rails and fiberglass construction are a much more complex problem. I've been using this for a few trips now and I'm extremely happy with the mount. It has performed flawlessly. I started by doing some CAD drawings of what I wanted and I videoed a lot of the construction so now I'm editing all that together so that others who may be interested in doing the same thing can see how I went about it. This was a prototype, so I made a few mistakes along the way, which I had to fix. Since the video was shot as the job was done, these mistakes are not fixed until the end. So I advise you to watch all episodes before you embark on building your own, if you want to avoid the mistakes that I made. This is the first episode and I still have a lot of footage to edit so I'm not sure how many episodes will be needed to cover it all. At least two, possibly three. I plan to modify the CAD drawings I started with to cover the changes that I had to incorporate to get this to work. These should be available by the time I upload the final video in this series. I'm not an engineer but if you would like to see them for educational purposes only you can PM my Facebook page, the link is in the description below. And once I have them done and have done some investigation on any legal liability aspects that may be involved, I'll contact you about getting a copy. Now that the housekeeping's out of the way, let's roll the clips. Now, I've already started to cut up the material for the mount for the Mincator. I did some CAD plans for what I want to do with it. That's one of the racing pieces I just drill some holes in it to dress it up a little bit so it just didn't look too plain. Same deal there, making this all out of scrap. The distance between the top and bottom plates and the angle between the top and bottom plates are the critical things on this. What you put in between it just has to be strong enough to support it and this is what I had to use. I'm going to weld those two pieces together, cut the fancy side out of this which you can't see in these plans. That there. Put some holes in it to sort of dress it up a little bit. Also got these parts here. Again, material that I had on hand. It'll all get welded together and it will all hopefully be strong enough to support the Mincator. On with the job. Right, I just drilled the holes in this and I've marked out where I've got to cut it. I used an annual cutter to cut those holes. Now you can't use one of them unless you've got either a drill press or a magnetic drill. But as I said, it doesn't matter what you use to separate the top and bottom plates. The important part is it's strong enough to hold them. That's most important. You don't want to lose your encoder. And the other thing is that the angles are right. And the distances separating the top and bottom plate, the distance it hangs out, all that's got to be right. But what you use to weld them together doesn't matter. Whatever you've got handy or whatever you choose to buy to do it. The next thing to do is to get the other plate cut. I've got one plate cut, I've got to cut the other big plate and then I'll have to get the plasma cutter out to cut the width of them because they won't fit in the saw that way. Plasma is the only way I've got to cut it and I'll have to grind it all smooth. Now this is the piece I'm going to use for the top plate. I've marked him off where I've got to cut him there because it's an American designed component of Mincator. I imagine that is why it is exactly one foot and a half an inch. You'll get the metric measurement off the plans if you want to build one and you want to get the plans. There's both metric and imperial measurements there. Once I've done that, I can't saw down that way, so I'm going to have to get the plasma cutter and cut into width down that way. But I'll cut this off in the bandsaw first. These plates are leftovers from a job I did in 316 stainless steel. They're probably 40 years old. I always keep my off cuts. They come in handy sooner or later. That's if they're big enough, of course. So the min code amount effectively has cost me nothing, apart from a little bit of electricity and some argon gas for the pig welder. That's about it. 
Our plasmid, these curves, you know, just freehanded them so they're a bit rough. I need to go over them with the grinder and smooth them all off. Just putting a couple of very, very light tacks on this, just to hold into place. Now this is the bracket that the mincoat is going to sit on, it's upside down at the moment. I'll just turn him over, have a look at that beautiful welding as we go. Really, really nice job of welding that. Beautiful, beautiful. Turn that sim right side up. Mincoat sits up there, there's four bolt holes. Hello my friend's in here again. He comes and visits me all the time. You see him there? Yeah, he's right in the viewfinder there. He just plies in here and sits in here with me while I, we talk. Well, I do all the talking, he just listens. But he seems to like it, because he keeps coming back for more. Anyway, there we are. That's the bracket, I've got to polish it up yet, make it all nice and shiny. You can see these scuff marks in it from the flap wheel. I'll get a, another couple of flap wheels, much finer grip, work that through. And then I'll do it by hand and just to finish it off, I've got some toothpaste. That will finish the polishing up. Oh dear. Hello, how are you going? Wouldn't want to come any closer, eh? Sit on my shoulder perhaps. Funny fella you are. You're a funny fella. Anyway, that's it. Finish him off over the next week and get him mounted on the boat by the following weekend, I hope. I just drill two holes through the base plate here and I cut along that line, and that line, and that line. That'll provide a recess for the power spit for the anchor to go through. I think that's going to be better than unbolting the anchor and bolting it back on on top of this. There's plenty of meat in this, it's overbuilt, so I'm sure that if I get the four bolts in back there, that's going to hold all right. Glue it down well anyway, just to be on the safe side. I drilled it off camera. I'm going to cut these off camera because I'm going to cut them with a little cut-off wheel on the small grinder because I don't have any larger cut-off wheels apart from the uh, bench saw. Now I'll just work away with, with these little ones and come back and show you when I've got it done. I've included this picture because there are so many armchair experts that feel the need to have a meltdown if I remove the guard from a tool in order to make a job easier. I'll point out now that you shouldn't do what I do. I was taught to use power tools when there were no guards on most of them and I still have all my appendages. A guard isn't the only form of safety available. In fact, the best safety equipment you have is inside your head. It's called a brain and it allows you to do complex risk analysis on any situation. But to satisfy the nanny mentality, I'll say it again, don't do what I do. Use your tools the way you were taught to use them, and if you haven't been taught to use them safely, consider getting some instruction. Now that I've had this on, I've had a chance to look at it. Now we're looking at it in this direction, this is the bottom. I've got to cut this piece off here, out there. It was reinforcing for this top piece. Yeah, I thought it looked cooler the way it was coming out here. And unfortunately, that's going to be in the way of the shaft of the anchor coming up through the centre here. So if I cut it back to there, it'll be out of the way. Have to do that. Okay, this is the finished Mincota mount. That's the bottom of it. Cut out there for the anchor bow roller to fit in. I decided it was better to cut it out than to mount the bow roller on top of the plate. I've got it all polished up. It's not a factory polish, but it's pretty shiny. I haven't done the top of it, of course. You can see that that's not real good. 
the bits that are going to be covered up with a mint cater I haven't done. But I've spent probably an hour and a half on it. Could have spent another hour or two on it and got a better job, but it'll do. My hands are aching and basically had enough. <laughs> Just going to put the mount of the mini coder on now. I'm going to take it down and test fit the Min Coder now. Pretty confident it's going to work, but I do want to make sure before I go permanently attaching the bracket to the boat. Now that I had a piece cut out to let it fit around the bow roller, I was able to put it in place and test fit the Min Coder. This showed one small mistake. The Min Coder sat against the bow rail on one side, not by much, it still went on an orco okay, but the rail was pressing against it and I thought it would eventually show signs of rubbing just from the vibration of the boat. A little bit of thought solved the problem for the prototype. If I redrilled the holes for the mounting block and moved them over about 10 millimetres, it would just clear the rail. The motor looked like it would clear the anchor quite comfortably, but this was to prove a major mistake. At this stage, I hadn't purchased a flower anchor for the boat came with a Danforth anchor and that wasn't suited to having it sit up on the bow roller and still deploy the indicator. I could see that quite easily. I was planning to fit an electric winch so leaving the anchor sit on the bow roller was part of the plan. It didn't occur to me at this point that the actual motor casing was going to be in the road of the anchor. I just looked at the shaft and not having the anchor there, the rest wasn't obvious. As I said at the introduction, you need to watch the full series of these videos before you attempt to do the same thing if you want to avoid the mistakes, so I'll go into it later when we start fixing this mistake. All right, I'm about to put the mounting block for the Mincoda on here. Because it's so tied up against the bow rail, it's actually touching the bow rail. It's not pushing it aside or anything, but it is touching it. So I've moved these holes nine millimeters diagonally to put it further away from the boat and a little bit further away from the bow rail. So it should give me probably five mils, four or five mils that way, just enough to clear the bow rail. And while I was moving it, I moved it out a little bit further because it is moving it closer to the anchor. So I thought I'd go out a little bit try and maintain the clearance that I had. I'm about to put it on now. You notice I've got some duct tape down there and the reason behind that is that if you can see that, there's a little gap under this end. See, there's a little metal rock. And that's because uh, welding always warps your metal and it's put a little high spot in here and pulled down on this back end really, because this front end is pretty good. Nothing there, nothing across there. Nothing across there, but the back end's pulled down a little bit because all the welding is along here, from there to there, and along there. And along there, really, but this one didn't pull at all. I'll just show you while we're here. You see how much gap is there? I hope you can see that in the viewfinder. There's a big gap there. This pulled pretty well on this bottom piece, but I'm just lucky ever so lucky on that in that it sits perfectly on the boat because fiberglass isn't really all that flat either and the bending in this just happens to match the bending in the boat. Can't believe I got so lucky on that. What I'm going to do now is going to use some sticker flex, a marine adhesive sealant, but I'm not using it as an adhesive really, it will be, but I am actually using it as a gap filler because I'm going to put some on this back section so that I can pull it down onto the sticker flex. I'll pull these front ones down tied onto the stainless steel, pull these back ones down on the sticker flex and that'll fill that tiny little gap that's there, I hope. That's the plan. Got the duct tape on so that I can peel the duct tape off afterwards and take off the excess sticker flex without making a big mess. That's what I hope is going to happen anyway. Whether it does remains to be seen. I've got my bolts ready. Went and got some new 316 stainless bolts because when I put it on originally thinking it was okay, I used these nylock nuts and you shouldn't use nylock nuts twice. 
I got some new ones, but they didn't have nylock nuts, so I'm going to put them on. I'll put the nylock nuts on as a traditional old-fashioned lock nut, and that will do the same job. How many different size spanners do you need to fit the nuts on a six millimeter bolt? They're all six millimeter bolts. And two different size spanners for the nuts, ridiculous. And that's my dummy spit for the day. This seems like a good time to break the first episode of this build. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. I do hope you got something out of it and that it inspires you to see about adding a mid coat amount to your fiberglass art pattern. If it has, then please watch the rest of these little videos before you start to avoid the mistakes that I've already made in this one. Some don't get fixed until the final video. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification beside it to be notified when I upload the next video in about a week. These videos will be placed in the Baseboard Mint Coder playlist with a link in the video description below. So click on that to see the rest of the videos when they're uploaded or go to my YouTube channel to see all of my videos. Until next time, good fishing.